With regard to uh, the two uh, laboratories that you mentioned, and were there any other laboratories that were in, that had the capability of uh, weaponizing uh, anthrax? I respectfully ask uh, that we provide that in a closed session. Uh, aspects of the response to that question may well be classified. The FBI director wasn't ruling out that other labs might be weaponizing anthrax. In fact, since the letter attacks, hundreds of labs are now registered to work with anthrax as part of U.S. biodefense programs. The response to the anthrax attacks and the bioterrorism initiative has been to launch a, a nationwide billion-dollar campaign to, quote, defend us from um, ter unknown terrorists. But the character of this program is roughly as follows. You say, well, what would the terrorists come up with? What's the nastiest, most dangerous, most difficult to diagnose, difficult to treat microorganisms that we can think of? Well, let's go bring that organism into existence so that we can figure out how to defend against it. The fact of the matter is, it's indistinguishable from an offensive program in which you would do the same thing. Francis Boyle, a leading opponent of bioweapons, is alarmed at what's happened in the wake of the anthrax attacks. It's like the Wild West out there, and the government's, you know, just dispensing money all up and down. This massive proliferation of the uh, bio labs uh, all over the country, unregulated research, development, testing. There's too much money at stake here for anyone to say no. This is the real legacy of the anthrax attacks. Since 2001, the U.S. government has budgeted over $50 billion for biodefense, much of it for private companies. Investigative journalist Edward J. Epstein finds this troubling. It clowns the chain of responsibility because private companies are owned by other private companies. And not only that, but it creates a mask for what could be government action because now governments can do things and hide behind uh, private companies. A poster child for privatized biodefense was the Bioport Corporation. It was the sole supplier of a controversial anthrax vaccine. Since 1998, the vaccine has been mandatory for frontline U.S. troops. But hundreds of enlisted men and women refused the vaccine. They claimed it was unsafe. Despite lawsuits to stop the mandatory vaccination programs, more than a million military personnel have received these anthrax shots. In 2003, Private Kamila Iwanowska refused to take the anthrax vaccine and was court-martialed. I read on a lot of uh, side effects that uh, some troops experienced from taking it previously. I also uh, got familiar with the Gulf War Syndrome at the time. I read about, um, I should call them victims, I guess, people who, who got sick, uh, violently sick from anthrax vaccine. Dr. Merrill Nass testified as an expert defense witness. She's treated soldiers suffering side effects she attributes to the vaccine. Multiple sclerosis, uh, lupus, illnesses that are equivalent to Gulf War syndrome where people have memory loss, muscle and joint pain and uh, severe fatigue, um, a variety of gastrointestinal disorders. There really is quite a lot of data to show the vaccine is unsafe. Private Iwanowska was found guilty of disobeying orders and given a dishonorable discharge. The vaccine Iwanowska refused to take had been developed by Fort Detrick Army scientists, including, according to the FBI, anthrax attack suspect Bruce Ivins. Bioport Corporation is today called Emergent Biosolutions and has received close to $1 billion in government contracts. When asked to respond to concerns raised about the safety of its vaccine, the company issued the following statement. Quote, Our vaccine is the only FDA-approved vaccine to prevent the infection of anthrax. 
has been studied more than just about any vaccine in the United States and has been deemed safe and effective, end quotes. In 2008, the U.S. signed a law declaring a seven-year anthrax emergency. Millions more doses of the anthrax vaccine were ordered for emergency response teams, and Fort Detrick underwent massive expansion. So if you add it together, it, it does appear that uh, we're gearing up to fight biological and chemical warfare. Could the 2001 anthrax attacks really have laid the ground for the unthinkable? Journalist Bob Cohen was coming to a frightening realization. The anthrax attacks may be turning the biodefense programs intended to protect us into programs that could trigger a biological arms race. That's what Francis Boyle fears. He's the author of the Biological Anti-Terrorism Act. It prohibits U.S. citizens from developing bioweapons for offensive use. If you have a look at the latest um, Department of Defense Chemical and Biological Defense Program report to Congress, the Pentagon is now in a position, in my opinion, from the reading through the latest report, that they could launch... Um, bio-warfare by means of anthrax anywhere in the world today. Uh, they have all the uh, uh, equipment, capability, uh, the troops have been inoculated, and everything's ready to go. Professor Boyle warns that such planning has global consequences. They are calling for a computer model uh, to simulate a worldwide strike with 5,000 biological weapons. It's in, it's in the document. It uses the term strike. That's offensive. Indeed, Russian Premier Vladimir Putin has warned the West that new breakthroughs in bio, nano, and information tech could lead to a new arms race. It's now obvious that a fresh round of a new arms race is starting. Unfortunately, it is not something... That Some observers suspect the Russians themselves continue to develop bioweapons at sites like the military lab from which anthrax escaped in 1979. Could the embers of the Cold War reignite and threaten the planet with a biological war? One man in a position to know was Ken Alibek. He was the number two man in the Soviet biowarfare program before he defected to the West. Alibek went on to consult with the U.S. government and assisted in the FBI's anthrax investigation. He worries about the disappearing line between biodefense and bio-offense. The United States is spending a huge amount of money, billions and billions of dollars, for so-called biodefense, they say. They uh, create viruses like Spanish flu virus again. What would be the purpose for this? In some countries' mind, it could look like, let me say, like a work to, to, to create some new biological weapons. Today, Alibek runs a biotech company in Kiev, in Ukraine. He is shadowed by a bodyguard, always mindful of the untimely deaths of fellow military scientists, Vladimir Pesechnik and David Kelly. If somebody wants to kill you, there is no problem for these people, if they're professionals, to take care of it, correct? Alibek is also worried about the larger threat. I just hope that we're not so crazy to start creating something which could wipe out the entire, uh, the entire uh, mankind. What became